brilliant day so far. It's not too hot, not too sunny, but please do pray for rain because we do need it ahead of Thursday, which is forecasted to be a scorcher. Today, got some heat happening in here. We got Graham in here today with us, and uh, as usual, he has a guest. Hi, Evan. Nice to be here, too. And I have a very exciting guest with uh, us today who, much like me, joined his father in business in his 20s and uh, now has his own very prominent Christian business. He is a family man from Sydney and has three adult children and one grandchild. He was pastoring a church in the Sutherland Shire until it merged and then he began an, a new min- got into a new ministry uh, through a ministry that helps kids living in poverty and abandonment in China, India and Indonesia and helps them to rewrite life stories and turn their futures around one by one, uh, which is a very successful ministry that I've known about for a while. And he runs it from his business, still has his business as a, as a, as a platform uh, that allows him to get on with his ministry. So I'm very happy to introduce David Ryan. Welcome, David. Thank you, Graham. Good to be here. It's really good to have you. Um, so your business, David, is in the laser industry. I know at one stage you did something uh, with um, gem testing equipment yes. <laughs> a while ago. I yeah. failed to get one of those from you, <laughs> which I could have used. Uh, but tell us about your laser business. It's cutting-edge technology. Yeah, well, we've been doing it since the mid-'80s uh, when we uh, installed some new computerised engraving machinery at that stage and started a new company selling the machinery. And today we're distributing laser cutting and marking machines, 3D printers, uh, design software, through a, a great team that work with me you know, based out of Sydney. Wow, that's really cutting edge. So how do you keep up with that? Uh, it's, it's, too, uh, it's grown to be too complicated for me in some ways because <laughs> of uh, all the rest of the things I'm involved in. But uh, we've got a good technical team who uh, they are gifted and stay on top of things. But yes, it's a fast moving industry, that's for sure. So what do, what do your clients use? 3D printers for these days? Yeah, we've got customers in all sorts of realms. Uh, education is a big one. And uh, we also have people who are in the uh, production of, of um, consumer goods, uh, who use them for marking products and so on. We've got people in the, uh, uh, the um, promotional items area who, again, things using them for marking badges and pens and all sorts of things like that. Uh, so they come from a very broad spectrum. So basically, these days, almost any industry uh, can be using laser work and using 3D print for developing their product and so on. Amazing building things. Yeah, especially the jewellery industry, for instance, yeah. as, as you know quite well. And uh, they use our software and 3D printers quite a lot. Yes, to make uh, moulds and, mm-hmm. and uh, that can be used exactly. uh, in casting. Fantastic. Uh, and I suppose you've um, got clients like Disney who, uh, who, who make little, little models of well, characters out of their using, movies. They're using similar equipment. Unfortunately, <laughs> right. our company, uh, who's called LST Group, uh, we are more local, I guess, in some respect than Disney and those sorts of companies. But uh, we sell across the country, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And, uh, of course, you're a married man and your mm-hmm. wife uh, and... And three children living in Sydney? Yes, yeah. Yep, Lucky that's right. you, isn't my wife that fantastic? Beth, and, uh, Beth looks after the running of the company along with my general manager, Jeff, and uh, they are looking after it on a day-by-day basis, and that gives me the space to be involved in the, the Ministry of Heart for Kids. And yes, and three adult kids, uh, as I still like to think of them as the kids, uh, twin girls and a son, yeah, and uh-huh. a grandchild as well. Uh, granddaughter, I think. Granddaughter, so. yeah. Lovely. Now, you mentioned that you travel a lot with Heart for Kids, mm. uh, and does your wife travel with you? She does occasionally uh, uh-huh. travel with me, uh, not not very much, um, but she has been to China with me a couple of times uh, and on other trips as well, and uh, we're just back from a combined ministry and holiday time, and uh, she was with me for part of that ministry and the holiday part, of course. Great. And how does she feel about staying at home while you... Uh, travel around the world <laughs> probably <laughs> not in the most luxurious parts of the world well nice. yeah I, I guess in some respects it's it's been life for the last 20 something years right. um so uh she does a, a great job looking after things on the home front um sometimes it's difficult i must admit it has its stretches and its moments and sometimes things happen that i never 
know about uh, because of the just being away and life goes on of course for your family back home yeah. um, so uh, she does a great job uh, having brought the kids up really in the while well, I've been traveling a lot since they were 13 I think when I started right. and uh, and now with the, the company as well she does a great job and, and she's involved in some ministry as well so I was uh, traveling in 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 southwest Queensland and north West New South Wales last week and didn't have any internet connection, no right. phone. Yeah, I found it was quite challenging. You probably go to countries where you can't keep it's, the phone alive as well. Do it's you? very difficult at times, and uh, and then of course when you do get online, it's extremely slow. Right, uh, it drops out a lot. Power drops out a lot, and yeah. then of course in some countries around the world you can't get to the sites that you're often using as well because of um, local government rulings and that type of thing. Yeah. So uh, that creates problems as well. Yeah, I've noticed that in China. I think exactly. Uh, I lost yeah. Google. <laughs> yeah, China, that, yeah, China you won't be getting much of Google or <laughs> Facebook and so on. No. Yeah. That's right. Um, well, good on your wife for... Um, Bethany, is it? Beth. Beth, Beth, yeah. Beth for uh, nice. keeping, the, keeping the home fires burning. Mm. So this ministry, Heart for Kids... Uh, I know it does a great job, but you're the best man to tell us about it. What mm -hmm. is uh, Heart, Heart for Kids set up to do, and, and how did it get started? I first went to China in the late 90s. Um, that led to a whole lot of changes because I had no intention of being in ministry or missions overseas. Uh, but God just changed a whole lot of things. Uh, and I resigned from running the family business at that stage, went to Bible college at Tabor, and then... Uh, returned to mission teams um, around 2002 with an organization called Chinese Church Support Ministries and uh, so it just grew with them. I did a few teams, I was asked to lead a team and then coordinate teams and essentially we rebirthed if you like the mercy ministry of CCSM and um, that became China Heart in those days uh -huh. uh, but then as God called us into other areas as well we realized the name china heart didn't really convey where we were and who we are so it became heart for kids as we began serving in india and indonesia as well and uh, so yes our tagline if you like that tries to encapsulate what we do is that we're helping kids rewrite life stories and turn futures around one by one and uh, we do this through educational scholarships helping kids stay in school uh, fostering. Uh, we have a, a group of kids who live in a foster home, babies and toddlers, in China. We're helping in care homes in India and what we call child development centres there. And with Indonesia, we're helping with a program for a, a youth, uh, really it's more of a young adults home, uh, provides the kids there with safe housing that we've been building. And then now they're going out and doing ministry through the local church and the foundation that we partner with there. Uh, which is fantastic to see. Wonderful. And how long have these uh, child development centres been operating? Well, we've just started the partnership with uh, with that organisation in uh, in India, uh, but they've been going for a number of years. The, the, our partner there began serving in that area of Indonesia, uh, sorry, of India, some 20 or so years ago. Uh -huh. but, uh, but our partnership is just a couple of months old. Right. And and where do the children or the students? young people come from? Do you work with local mm. churches to get uh, them involved? We do in India and Indonesia. Um, India uh, and uh, Indonesia, they're local pastors who lead local churches and are involved there with them. But in China, it's a whole different ball game, of course, yeah. uh, and not so easy uh, to work with local churches. <laughs> um, so there we're really serving as ourselves uh, and, uh, and doing the work directly ourselves. Uh, I know there's a law in China that um, that forbids um, teaching people under the age of 18 mm. uh, anything about Christianity, as yeah. I understand it. True. Uh, how do you get around that one? I, I guess what we're about is sharing God in a practical sense uh, directly. So uh, I do firmly believe in being ready to share the gospel at any time. Um, but, of course, we have to work with the country's regulations, etc. Um, and also the fact that people who are cold and hungry and starving are not in a good place to hear the gospel that easily either. So yeah. it's a, to me it's a dual path. We are there, we answer questions about why we're doing what we're doing, uh, what it's all about for us, and uh, at the same time we're helping them, the kids get educated or helping medically or, or whatever the need that they're facing is. 
in China, do you find that the students know that you come from a fairly wealthy country of comfort and, mm. <laughs> and, and, and ask why you would be we sleeping on the floor in a Chinese? Yeah. It's certainly something that they're no doubt aware of, that there's a difference between their country and our country. Mm. It's certainly not something that we flaunt in no. any way. No. Um, but uh, often we do get asked, why do we do what we do? And, no. and that's an opportunity to share those personal moments of, you know, we believe in a God who loves everybody, who cares for these kids um, and who wants relationship. And this is why I personally do what we do. And, and from that point on, it's up to the individual to make their uh, explorations, if you like, and to come to their conclusions. Excellent. Uh, and of course, you, do, do you personally speak any foreign languages to communicate? I don't. I, I wish I did. <laughs> but I found that for me, um, learning Chinese would need me to be in the country where I was immersed in it. Uh, it's a complicated language. Uh, but we've got great people who work with us who are bilingual and they're fantastic. Yeah, so they're local people who are Christians? Yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, how did you manage to recruit them or how did your organisation manage to recruit you know, them? They've been with us now, the main ones have been with us for nearly 10 years and uh -huh. um, like a lot of things within uh, missions and within China and countries like it, you, you meet by word of mouth. Yeah. You, you can't go down and put a sign up on the local uh, <laughs> notice board. Um, and so one person talks to another person, talks to another person and you get introduced and discover uh, that we have something that will help them and they're good at things that will help us. Are you telling me they don't have community notice board for Christian churches <laughs> in China? I haven't personally <laughs> seen one there. <laughs> okay, well, there, we all know that now. <laughs> um, so you're, um, I'll ask you a difficult question, you're mm. dealing with children and, and young people uh, and you're, you're using volunteers. Mm. Uh, how do you protect the children from the inevitable pedophile who probably wants to, uh, mm. once they hear about it, wants to get involved? Yeah, I, I guess, sadly, it is a, a, a subject matter that we have to face and all ministries and organisations need to face these days. Uh, it's a bit of a struggle because we're dealing with people who come to us as volunteers from many different countries in the world. Uh, lots of different procedures and so on. Uh, we make it very clear to people that we have a, uh, a child protection policy that steps up all the time that we're serving, whether they're coming as teams for a two-week period or even just for an hour into our foster home, for instance. Nobody gets access inside the front door without having been given our child protection policy and by signing our, our declarations as well. So we do uh, have a high requirement there and do our best to make sure that our kids are protected. And uh, right. even with going out to visit them in the villages and so on, again, same thing, nobody comes unless they've signed up to our protection policy. Do do um, do they have working with children numbers if they come from Australia? And we we do look for those, yeah. 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 Well, right. we're here today with David Ryan. Hey, hang on, wait a minute. Wasn't that man's voice amazing? <laughs> it's amazing. I didn't recognize it. <laughs> For those of you out there, you would have guessed by now, that is Graham who did that scripture. I knew a lot of scriptures. Wonderful job, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. It's such an honour to speak God's word anywhere, anytime. And we're here with David Ryan, and we're talking about what David does uh, in his spare time. <laughs> yeah. Helping children to uh, rewrite their life stories in very, very unfortunate circumstances, these, these kids. And... Uh, and uh, I, I remember being at Daybreak Church in Wyoming a few years ago and an enthusiastic team was getting ready mm. to go to India. That's right, they uh, came and did a great job. How did they go? They did fantastic, yep. Uh -huh. The uh, pastor came along and a few of the others, uh, Pastor Marcus, and uh, they did a fantastic job in India. And uh, next year I'm hoping for another team to India later in the year. Mm. And uh, so uh, I must tap him on the shoulder and see what he's up to, I think, again. Yes, <laughs> yeah, great. So those... Uh, those volunteers that come with you, uh, do they pay their own way? Is it, a, is it, a, is it, a, is they use their holidays and take yes, the holiday pay and off they go? We have uh, a, a lot of volunteers who come during the year on, on a number of Mercy teams. And uh, yes, they pay their own way and they, uh, for travels and they pay their own way of, of expenses in country. And um, they just give of their time and uh, they don't need to have particular 
medical skills or professional skills. They need to have a, a love, of course, for God and a love for the kids to come and, uh, and just share God's love on them. And uh, my hope is that each day when we finish in the uh, whatever program we're doing, that the kids have a sense of being loved and being special. And uh, we can't communicate that always through language, but we can communicate it through our actions. And uh, that's really important and valuable to me. There you go. The only qualification is that you can get there and pay your own way and have a heart for kids. Mm -hmm. uh, kids who really need to see the love of God yeah. in operation. So we've been talking about uh, the children that come in and, and, and get an education, get their lives turned around, have opportunities, especially in a place like India where the lower caste children probably mm. don't have many opportunities at all from True. what I've heard. Tell us about some of these uh, life stories. Give us some examples mm. of, of some of the life stories of, of children whose lives have been turned around. Yeah, look, there's so many of them really and I'm always a little bit cautious with life stories because I want people to see the child behind the story and um, and know that, uh, yes, we're, we're telling a story but it's actually real life. It's everyday life. Uh, in China, a man and his wife and two children were just walking between villages looking for work, basically, and moving to uh, where they hoped they would get a job. And the man saw some commotion on the side of the road. Uh, people were looking and wondering what's, uh, what's happening there. And he went across and he saw that there'd been a, a little child left in a cardboard box right beside the dirt road. And uh, he, he was amazed at this and he really felt he had to do something. So he spoke to his wife and he wanted to take the child with them and give her a, a new home. And uh, his wife wasn't real happy. They had two children already to feed and I guess, you know, economic circumstances and so on made her worry about that. And uh, anyway, she agreed. But then sadly, a few months later, she left the marriage and took the boys with her and left him with the daughter, the baby that they just recently picked up from the roadway. And anyway, he raised that little girl. And when I came across and met them, uh, she was around about 13 or 14 years old. And we sat outside their home, which was a, a very simple home, literally cut into a, a dirt hill. And... Um, and then just a, a floor put down and that was their single room home and as we sat there though you could just see in their eyes that there was a love between the two uh, that she knew that she'd been not just born but she'd been picked up by this man and saved by this man and raised by him and she loved him and he loved her and so you could just see that happening every time they interacted and uh, we had another young man who's now in his mid-twenties, mid to later twenties, and he was helped through education. We, we helped him with a scholarship through school and then through university. And today he has a, a, a secure job, or as secure as anyone's job is, um, in a railway industry in uh, China, in the security area. And uh, so his life has been turned around, but not only his life, but his future children's life as well are going to be different because now he has that that um, success, if you like, that education brings and a better lifestyle ahead. And one particular story I like from China is um, one of the girls who actually works for us and she oversees the mercy work in our foster home through Dove's Wings. And uh, Wendy was a uh, one of our China Heart kids, if you like, and uh, we helped her through school, through her education and high school and uh, university. And then she came back and she said, can I work with you guys? And so you have this whole cycle of helping and then returning to give back. And uh, Wendy's been with us now for about three years and she's an amazing girl. And uh, now she has her own little son as well. And uh, she does a great job uh, through that area of the ministry. So there's some stories of, of China in India. There's a young woman who's in her early 20s who moved into the care child or the child care home then uh, when she was about two and a half years old, and uh, so she was raised in that environment. Now she's graduated school and she's at uh, university level, and she's learning counselling. And the, her her goal is to be able to move back into the child care area, and to bring the help and the counselling that kids growing up facing things that she faced are in need of. Uh, and uh, she's, she's going to do a great job. I know her uh, and her heart and she's going to do a great job, I'm sure. 
Um, then in Indonesia, we've got a different sort of program there, and um, we've been building some safe housing and partnering with an organisation there who have got young adults who have moved into Bali from some of the outlying island areas of NTT. And they've come, most of them, with not much education, not much of a prospect, and uh, so they've come, got their education, and uh, now are serving and giving back themselves either in the local church, but each week they are either at the local children's cancer ward, working with kids who are going through, as we would understand, some of their, their darkest days as they face this battle with their cancer. Uh, and on the alternate weeks, they're serving kids on the outlying edge of a slum village where they're bringing uh, to them a program. I guess you'd, you'd say it's a Sunday school program or a Bible vacation type of a club program of English and games and crafts and so on to let the kids see that they have value, that they have worth and that there's hope for them, you know, as they learn these things and build their skills as they grow f through their childhood, um, that they can give back themselves and they can be successful, if you like, adults not contained by their environment in the slum. And you mentioned NTT areas, what's that? There, there, there are a series of outlying islands around Indonesia um, where a lot of these kids have come from. So there are something like 3,000 islands, aren't there? Oh, there's many, many, uh, yeah, a yeah. huge number of islands. So this is in Bali. And uh, you mentioned that somewhere that you minister, children that are already past the age of entry to primary school mm. who might be i guess seven or eight or nine or ten mm. don't get an opportunity to come into the school because they simply don't have the a a a level of e education exactly. that would give them an entry uh, explain mm. that to us yeah we've just started working with a new partner in india and uh, it really excites me in some ways because these are children who, as you said, have got minimal, if any, education. And so the local schools uh, say to them, well, you can't come to our school because your education is so low. And yet, how do you get educated unless you can go to school? So the purpose or one purpose of the child development centres that we're, we're partnering with is to help these kids get their education up to a level where they can join with the local official government school uh, and uh, and gain their their education and get into the system if you like and uh, you know we're looking forward to seeing these kids uh, be able to just step up and and gain what all these other kids around them can get but these ones for whatever circumstances sometimes it's families that are just very dysfunctional that are broken in various ways where sometimes the parents just haven't taken them to school in their early years sometimes they have addictions and so on that they're facing and and uh, finances are redirected to feed those addictions uh, maybe drugs maybe alcohol and uh, so the kids are the ones who are missing out but through the centers that we're helping with they will eventually have a better future so I suppose in India they would be lower caste? Most of them, yes. Kids. Yeah, they would be. Yeah. Maybe some of them would be already working at a very young age? Um, I think that would be the case for some. Um, I'm actually heading to the project in uh, a few weeks' time and uh, we'll see firsthand exactly what the families are facing uh, as well as the kids. But most of the kids we're working with are probably uh, 10 and below, uh, right. just to give you a picture of age. So these are the children that you look for sponsorships for? Exactly. Tell yeah. us about the sponsorships. Yeah, well, we, we fund the work through uh, greatly through child sponsorships, which is a, a monthly commitment. Uh, our commitment is $45. And um, so people come alongside us sponsor a child, maybe multiple children, and uh, that allows us to bring them the ministry hands and feet uh, through uh, each of these countries. And uh, we have some businesses as well who partner with us, and, and I love seeing that because being from a small business background myself, I can see the, the ability in businesses to be able to partner with an organisation like Heart for Kids and to, to bring both their financial uh, acumen if you like but also skills and products and so on we we had a company who late last year gave us three computers to take to our three uh, admin staff in China and uh, we had a company uh, a very large bank recently who um, shocked me one day if you like one of the one of our supporters is a staff member in this bank and she said to me that um, uh, look Dave we're going to do another fundraiser this year and we're going to sell socks and I thought, 
Wow, that's different. I hadn't thought of that one before. Uh, you know, how much can you raise selling socks? Um, well, they raised seven and a half thousand dollars from her co-workers, and they did a, an amazing job. And then the bank uh, stepped in, and they said, "Well, we'll match our staff members," and they turned seven and a half into fifteen. Uh, and uh, that's a lot of socks, uh, <laughs> but they did an amazing job. Um, we've had, of course, uh, our friends that you know very well down at um, Opal and Pearl Cutters, sure. and uh, you know, helping out as well in uh, in their uh, business. And so, uh, companies can do a lot, but often we as business owners are so focused on the figures at the end of the month that we actually forget about what can we do with our company that actually will give back or that will help others. So yeah. uh, I'm always encouraged by what businesses can do. Wow! So literally, uh, for the the cost of one third of a of a takeaway coffee mm-hmm. per day, yeah. you can you can see a child educated it's like who that. never would have had the uh, opportunity otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and change certainly change that child's life. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, give them a whole new future. Yes. And people can contact you, David, on. O two nine five three three four zero nine six, and I'll mention that number again before we finish today. And you have a website www.heartforkids.org. Mm. So um, That's right. yeah, people can get in touch. A privilege to have David Ryan with us today, founder and CEO of Heart for Kids, and uh, hearing about the wonderful work that Heart for Kids does. I was uh, at Daybreak Church in Wyoming. Uh, a few years ago and David was putting together a team with uh, Marcus McDonald and mm. uh, and he's going to suggest uh, another another one from Daybreak if you're listening from Daybreak yeah, they did <laughs> a, a great surprise job. announcement yeah, no they, they did a great job when they came on the uh, India team yes and uh, Marcus was uh, was fantastic and the people that he brought with him yeah. uh, really just sowed into those kids lives and you could see the relationships building uh, yeah. as they gave out of what God was giving into them Excellent. They might have the opportunity to uh, return. Hopefully, absolutely. Yeah, what part of India was that? And that was in sort of uh, the east side uh, in Goa, and uh, the work we're doing now is there and also up in the north of India as well. That's not too bad a place. Goa, is it? Isn't Goa's it? a Pretty nice, nice. Uh, area. Um, it's uh, English-speaking, which makes it a little bit easier than some of the other countries that we serve in. Yeah. But uh, a great bunch of people, great bunch of kids um, who really just responded to the programs that we were doing excellent and we were talking about the cost of educating a child only 45 dollars a month Mm. and the sponsorships and and i'll mention the website again uh, heartforkids.org heartforkids.org where um, people can sign up because uh, it's a, such a small amount of money. Mm. Uh, it certainly sounds a lot less than I've been paying for my grandchildren's <laughs> education. <laughs> it's amazing how far... Maybe I'll send them over there for a <laughs> Well, yeah, may you not think about that a little bit longer, but it is amazing how we can stretch the funds. And um, when people give us uh, a, a gift or donation, we, uh, we always work to send 82% of that through to the projects. Uh-huh. So we, we work on quite a, a lean budget here in Australia and uh, that's that's helped by businesses who support as well of course and our company which supports and and so on uh, so it's uh, it's I guess everybody coming together to do their bit which enables the funds that we get to stretch as far as they can it's fantastic and um, you you mentioned that there are businesses who encourage their staff mm. to get involved in sponsoring children and you said there's a special organization set up for that that it's the first time i've heard about that yeah there's a, a process called workplace giving and that enables uh, staff to be able to donate to a charity like ourselves and do that through their own payroll system and so their hr department or their payroll department simply connect with us as they may do with a, a super fund for instance and then the employee asks them to take out ten dollars a week or whatever it is from their pay and uh, and that comes through to us from their employer and uh, their tax and everything is taken care of it's all from done from within their their salary and so it's a very simple program and uh, and way to donate uh, you don't have to worry about receipts and extra re- receipts and so on from us uh, you simply see it on your group certificate already yeah so it's like um donating tax-free dollars essentially you don't have to worry about it at the end of a year and mm-hmm. try and claim a refund and that's so right that sounds it's really very like a very simple idea. yeah 
yeah, that's very, very good taken right off the top. And um, as generous people like you, and uh, I heard Michael Youssef say it on Sunday, when you do give, you always, or God always makes sure that there's more, that the, the what's left goes further than what would have been there. Yes. Had you yeah. not I mean, given. Certainly been my, my experience, and I'm yeah. sure it's yours too. Yeah, look, God's given us a platform to be able to minister. Yeah. Um, when I started this company up that we have now, LST Group, we uh, we didn't do it with any intent of, of a ministry um, platform, but at that stage, at my stage then, and my youth then, if you like, uh, for me it was just another way to make money um, because my plan uh, back in the 80s was to live back on the waterfront where I grew up. Uh, it involved a, a yacht and a sports car. And yes, giving back to God a little bit through teaching some RE or scripture uh, and then some yacht racing during the week. But, you know, uh, then God took me to China and um, he didn't tell me he was giving me, uh, you know, that, that he wanted me to change anything. It was just a three week mission trip. Uh, but it actually took me to China and uh, changed the rest of my life yeah. and, and others, of course. And, um, but God has been faithful right throughout that time. Yeah. Uh, he always is. He's never lets us down, especially mm. when we Amen. obey him and become hilarious givers. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's an excellent idea. So it's called uh, giving through your workplace. So those of you that are at work and haven't spoken to the boss about that, look it up. Uh, where would they go to find out about that? Look, they can just email us and ask us for a brochure on okay. workplace giving. Um, maybe their business is already connected in that way, but uh, certainly either an employer or an employee can just email us at admin at heartforkids.org and uh -huh. we can send them a brochure. Excellent. So uh, tell us um, what's going to happen when you go to uh, something, so a church like um, Daybreak in Wyoming or any other church on the mm. Central Coast yeah. uh, that that's keen to have a team and I must say two of my grandchildren have been overseas in similar on similar trips mm. and they they've both come back with such a deep appreciation mm. for what we've been blessed with here in Sydney one of them said I'm just so appreciative of the education that I've got because mm. I've been meeting 20 year olds who are still saving yeah so that they can exactly. go to school exactly and uh, and i've been put through school and and and, and, and able to do whatever i choose to for do sure i want to do yeah. so it just really does help especially yeah. young people yeah well i get to know a number of churches through going and preaching uh, sundays at churches and meeting with them or with their their business people in their church or other organizations and uh yeah obviously sharing about teams and how people can come and and serve with us i believe that we're in a position, if you like, to be something of a conduit. Um, we we serve in country and bring relief to the kids that we're serving with there. But we also provide something to people in churches or in their home countries where they can give. And and I think God wants us to be giving, and He this this was one way that we can do that. And so we're something in the middle that links the two, if you like. And, and so people can come on team, either one of our international teams, which are made up of people from various countries, and they come for those two weeks and we lead the team and we provide all the program, but it's a very hands-on team. It's, there's no come and see, it's a come and do environment. And so we don't actually run the games, but team members run the games, for instance, and, uh, and the crafts and whatever the, the, the activity is. But as well as that, we can provide for a church who want to bring their own team with their own team leader, and we can provide the logistics and the activities and uh, uh, the venues, if you like, for them to come and uh, explore how God has gifted them to give. And uh, they can still, they provide the activities and plan the games and what have you. And uh, we simply provide them with the logistics and the, the venue to serve. Um, so there's two different ways that teams mm -hmm. can come together. Wow, what great projects for churches to have hmm. because it's projects like those that cause a church to grow and thrive. Absolutely. God really blesses that. Well, when I, when I began this, I guess, uh, back in the late 90s, um, you know, the, uh, the idea of mission teams wasn't in my worldview. But I, I quickly saw the benefit to people as they came back from teams 
to sow into their local church. It, it wasn't just about what we did in country. It wasn't just about what happened in the team member. But as we, we send people back to their home countries, we're encouraging them to get involved in their church uh, mission life. It may be some more to do with international, but it may just be a matter of what can we do down on the local street corner? How can we help in the local school? How can we connect our church with the homeless and so on? And we just see people, uh, I guess, fired up by what they see and experience mm. God doing in country yeah. that they bring home and do in their home country or hometown. And, and so the, it just has this dual input, if you like, an impact. Absolutely. And so often you watch on a documentary on television about some of the... Uh, poor places in the world and mm. you're sitting mm. there frustrating thinking frustrated thinking what can be done tell me about the solution yeah well you're offering the solution <laughs> exactly right. They're yeah, offering the yeah. Solution. and and that's right we, we provide that solution that conduit to bring people who want to give who want to do something yeah. some people can can come some people can uh, pay and, and support a team member to come or sponsor yeah. a child to, to yeah. you know, in their education. And others are our prayer teams, yeah. and our intercession team. Um, you know, people who just who are here at home praying for the ministry, praying for the kids, yeah. and uh, join with us in that way. Yeah. Hey, I just thought of a great Christmas present. Pay for a member of your family to go, or at least... <laughs> <laughs> That's possible. That's possible. Well, next year we'll have... Uh, uh, we've already got three teams planned for the year one is full already and uh -huh. that uh, that's uh, a team actually from the church where i attend in sydney and uh, our chairman will be leading that team uh, -huh. uh that'll be a a team of great people coming along on that it's a life group basically it's yeah. a life group plus a few more yeah. who are coming and then we have two international teams later in the year and uh, what's the difference between your church team and an international team? The international team, we provide the leadership, and so we have a uh, one guy from England, actually, who's been leading the teams for the last couple of years. I, mm -hmm. I've led about 50, nearly 55 teams mm -hmm. um, in the last 20 years, and uh, John now is leading the teams, and uh, so that's our international teams. It's people from various countries. Great. Uh, how many teams can you put together in a year? Well... The coming year we'll have two internationals in China, one church team and hoping to have one team running into India as well later in the year. Room for many more? Yes, there's room for people and uh, all except for the church team. Yeah. Uh -huh. So get in touch with um, David Ryan. You can ring David on 029533 or just simply go to heartforkids.org and... Uh, yeah. They will find uh, your email address We'd there. Love to talk to David people. at heartforkids.org. David at heartforkids.org. David, it's been really thrilling to hear. Thanks, Graham. What Heart for Kids is doing Thank and the results and, and, and the great Thank you. The great um, fruit for eternity. That's right. That um, God's doing some amazing full, things. Yeah, you'll see the full benefit for mm. on the other side of Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're well prepared. Thank you. Thank you very much.